Chad Flores. We are Iron Edge, and this is uh, a, a redo. We're, we're bringing back sparring sessions. Uh, we had a lot of uh, good engagement with sparring sessions. We're not going to do it daily, but we're going to do it as often as we can. We're just going to get together and uh, chat about what God's putting on our heart based off of the battlefield and what's going on uh, currently in our lives. Uh, we just want uh, you to know exactly what God is telling us, uh, what we're hearing from him. Uh, every week we have a weekly meeting anyway, where we, we have some pretty good conversations. We try to talk about business, but it always ends up going toward <laughs> the spiritual and, and, and what God's called us to do and what we're, we're trying to do here with iron edge. And, uh, so anyway, we're going to, we're going to just pick a topic, you know, like I said, whatever God's putting on heart and talk about it. And, Today, uh, both Shad and I have been kind of noticing um, some different things. Uh, you know, it's, it's interesting. The stuff that comes across our social media feeds. Uh, a lot of times everybody complains about social media and all the negative around it, right? TikTok and, and all the, the brainless activity that goes along with it. But I know God uses it on a consistent basis with me. Of course, it depends on the algorithm, right, Chad? What you're following. Yeah, I mean, and actually, before we dive into the content... This is something that I was thinking about, like, you know, we're, we're not social media guys. No. Like, if we were, maybe we'd actually, I don't know, have developed something like that. But we cannot get away from the fact that we need to be on here. Um, and it's not even so much, you know, we could care less about a following or, you know, the numbers and all that kind of stuff. But no matter how busy we get or not that we're trying to get away from it, I would say no matter how far we accidentally get away from it because of life, it always comes back to, we have to keep doing this. You know, even if there's one guy out there that hears us. So like this great tool that is social media, you know, yeah, there's, like you said, there is all kinds of craziness and negative, but it's also a phenomenal tool. We keep, you know, building on our iron ed Instagram and we keep getting amazing feeds, you know, from people out there that are doing inspiring things and, Really yep. just trying to serve God authentically. So it just drives us right back to kind of the whole premise of what we're chatting about today. Yeah, I mean, it's it, and it's it's interesting, some of the stuff that, that's been coming across lately. One of the things God's been really impressing on me as I'm, I'm writing this book about killing the Christian persona, right? And, and, and being as authentic as we possibly can as men of God. Um, one of the things God keeps impressing on me through some of the things I see in social media is second uh, Timothy one seven. And I just want to read it from the amplified. It says for God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear. Those are three things in there. I like that timidity or cowardice or fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and love and of sound judgment and personal discipline abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. And, and you, you think about that, <laughs> You think about that message right there and what he's telling us. Uh, it, it's it really is just saying, "Hey, it's time to step out." And and, and look, it, it doesn't matter really what you want. Uh, if God's throwing up these these open doors and these challenges, and you're not taking them, um, people are missing out on the message. And I have had a lot of controversy around that. I have a I don't know for sure, you know. But somebody asked me the question the other day of like. Um, you know, God can reach somebody anywhere they are. And I was like, yes, but how does he do that? Right. He does it through us. He, he gave us that responsibility. Otherwise, like, like I say, on a consistent basis, we'd get saved yeah. and we'd go to heaven. There'd be no reason for us to even be here. He uses people and it requires us to take action and open our mouths and actually say something for those individuals to hear. If we don't say anything, I wonder, and I'll, I'll ask him someday when I see him, or he'll probably just tell me, if I don't say something, if I don't go out there, accept those challenges that he's providing for me with, with no fear, right? Uh, are people missing out and not hearing the gospel, the great commission that we're all required to do? And so the, there's been a lot of um, interesting things. One of the videos that we posted on Instagram was that ESPN sportscaster, right? Um, mm -hmm. Praying openly and with boldness. 
and he, he didn't get canceled, which was really odd. I was like, oh my God, that guy's done, right? <laughs> it just, but our, we just reposted it with a little blurb at the end of it. Hey, we need more of this. Thousands of likes and it just went kind of crazy out there and everybody is still commenting on that. Why is that, you know? I don't know, Shad. I mean, it's 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 something we haven't seen. Why are we surprised at that? Why is that such a shock for us to see that kind of boldness, you know, in, as Christians? And then some of the hate yeah. that he got for the Christian side, too. Oh, you didn't say the name of Jesus. It's like, oh, my oh God, my seriously. <laughs> you know, it's like the guy just prayed knowing that he could probably lose his job right there. And then he mm-hmm. gave it all up and just went forward with this is what God wants me to do. I care about this guy and I want to see him live, pray. And guess what? That dude's back up walking around and yeah. talking about the name of Jesus. You know, the other part of that is, you know, I'm a, I'm a sports guy, as you know, um, love organized sports and literally I will watch any and every sport. been playing pickleball <laughs> a lot. Pickleball. Lately. Pickleball. I, I love it. I get out there and these old ladies just whip my tail. Running me all over the place till you figure you're it out. From the Midwest, you gotta be, <laughs> be from the Midwest to play pickleball with a beer in your hand and a paddle in the other. <laughs> well, I'm learning and it's fun, uh, but you know, the truth of the matter is, these are just everyday people, right? That are in their communities playing sports. You know, it's life. Like we grow up, we go to church, we we play sports, and literally high schools all over this nation kneel and pray. They're led by good, godly men who it's, you know, you know, maybe it's a little bit of uh, America, the Bible and football and a beer like, OK, but like that, that's all over the U.S. And, and no matter how much, you know, big, big tech or big media wants to try to like, you know, press that down. Like it's the everyday man and woman that love God and love playing sports. And so, you know we have like the, the big names out there that are controversial or whatever in sports. But when, when this guy Hamlin went down, like there was both teams in the center of the field on their knees praying. What was the first, their first reaction? And yeah. because that, that's not, that's not something contrived or staged. That's who they are. That's what they went to automatically. What do we know to do when, when there's, tragedy and stuff like that we're gonna rally around we're gonna seek god we want his peace like it's like that's authentic yeah. we're talking about authenticity here that's authentic and so you know that's what we have to continue to do and the you know the part in the scripture that challenges us for what is holding us back it states it it's fear and yeah. so what are we afraid of we're afraid of being canceled we're afraid of being mocked we're afraid of the repercussions. We're afraid of, I don't know, so on and so forth. Right. And so this scripture really challenges us to, to face that, right. We have to, we have to, we have to face that fear and, and decide, well, what I am, what am I afraid of? And then the next question is, okay, well, who am I going to trust in yeah. that situation? And it's obviously we're trying to compel people to trust God you know, not that we have it all figured out and do it perfectly, but I think at the end of the day, Pete, one of the things that brings you and I back to this table, so to speak, is we can get it all wrong, like numerous times. But at the end of the day, we're like, yeah, but we do know where to go. Okay, hard head, stop trying to do this on your own, go back to God. And every time you do that, It works out perfectly. Uh, One of our buddies texted me a scripture this morning that goes right in line with this. I just remembered. And it's Psalm 37, 5. And the Passion Translation says, give God the right to direct your life. And as you trust him along the way, you'll find he pulled it off perfectly. So (laughs) as adventurous and authentic and manly as we want to be, like, okay, have those things. But give it to God to organize and align it. Yeah, and it's 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 this idea that we have to be at a certain level, a certain status before we can step out in faith and boldness and do all this. Like we have to be a pastor or a preacher and go to seminary or whatever. Um, newsflash, none of those guys are perfect and girls. Uh, none of us are. Everybody falls short. So no matter what, you're, you're always going to 
you're going to fall short until we reach that point, right? Whatever it is, whether it's being in heaven or whatever your your nuanced belief is on that, you know, whether he comes back and, and we see him here on earth, I, I, it doesn't matter. We're constantly being refined. We, we all have things to overcome. And if we let that hold us back, then we'll never – we'll never make it, you know, we'll, we'll constantly be stuck in that mode of waiting and waiting and waiting for, for things to be perfect for us to step out and, and be bold. Like these people are starting to, to be, and there's a craving that's going on right now for, for that kind of authenticity and boldness. People are so sick. I think of the fake, the personas, I, I can't like my, like it goes back to social media. I go through the feed looking for, certain things. And luckily, like I said, I've kind of built the algorithm to where it's populating some pretty cool stuff. And I'm not, I'm pretty sure that's God influencing the algorithm, hopefully, because I don't think those (laughs) algorithms are built to, to go steer us toward, toward God. But, um, uh, the things that I'm seeing people do and the boldness that they're, they're displaying, you know, there's, there's this, I've been studying it for a long time. I I do a lot of operations all over the United States and in the world. And I've seen the difference in different cultures when it comes to where we kind of are at societal, societally, where we can say, hey, my, my version of reality is whatever I want it to be. Whereas most countries that are developing nations and things like that, they just don't have that luxury, right? It's like reality is reality because if I don't face it, I'm going to die. Um, we haven't had that kind of pressure really in the United States for a long time, but it's just like you said, when that crisis really hits and you're faced with it, where do you end up going? So a a lot of these different countries, they end up going toward a deity of some kind or religious belief of some kind, um, for, and they'll spend like their entire life savings trying to, you know, find some, some hope of some kind, something that will help them when they're in these desperate situations. We haven't had that. It's created this like complacency in our lives, but it's also creating kind of a stirring where something feels wrong. You know, it feels like we're yeah. in the middle of the catastrophe all the time. Right. Um, but we're really not. You know, there's a difference between like psychological crisis and actual physical. You're faced with death, gun in your face type crisis. And so we feel this in ourselves, I think, and, and a lot of people are feeling it and they're feeling this calling to do something or that something's not right. Mm-hmm. And this is mostly I'm talking to Christians here and people in the church who are just like, I, I go to church every week. Uh, I'm tithing. I'm, I'm praying every day, but I still feel like there's something missing. And this is what God's showing me. What's missing is, is you actually stepping into whatever role he's called you to do. Uh, in faith, dying to yourself, right? Which means everything that you have is only there as a platform to voice the gospel, right? So dying yourself, meaning don't try and protect all that stuff, but actually stepping into the role that God's called you to do with boldness. And that's, what's going to change, change the world. The reason we're in the situation we're in right now, in my opinion, um, is because we're not stepping into those roles. We're not standing up. We're not becoming the heroes of faith because every single one of us are called to that. It's not yeah. reserved for Paul and Peter and, and, and these other people. It's, it's all of us. We've, we've already got the victory. We've already won. We should be on the offensive. We should be constantly defending ourselves against the fiery darts of the wicked one, right? We should be actually taking that fight to him and we're all called to do it. So how do we, how do we recognize that when those open doors yes. are in front of us? I mean, so one of the, one of the things I'm thinking of, like, you know, there's guys listening that, that they're not, they're never going to be that guy we watched <laughs> that was given the gospel on the plane. Like they just, that is not in them. Um, you know, and so what's the level of boldness? I think the scripture that you, that you pulled out today really actually gives us a few things that we can do like actionable steps. It's, so instead of timidity and fear, because the tragedy is when good men don't do anything, right? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, and, and so there's three things we can do there. We can choose the power of the Holy Spirit, right? And we can choose um, discipline, self-discipline. Those are two actionable things that we can do. And then what's the other part of the scripture? Love. 
like if we're doing things out of love and you know not this mamby pamby oh i love you like love that says i'm willing to put it all on the line because i really love you you might people might get upset you might get mad at me but because i love you i'm willing to step out and be authentic and be bold and and speak truth right speak truth in love so i love the fact that instead of timidity and fear we can choose those things, a, a boldness by the power of the Holy Spirit. So what does that look like? Sometimes that just looks like um, the the uh, the boldness to speak up in a private conversation, the truth, yeah. right? Sometimes that could be in a group setting. It could be at a job and in a meeting and things are like a little bit on the edge of maybe um, not being ethical and you speak up, you know, it could be. It could be something more egregious, but there's so many opportunities that if we would yield ourselves to the power of the Holy Spirit, give us insight and teach us and show us what to do. And then, of course, self-discipline is a big one. I mean, you're talking about you know the, the algorithm and that one guy we've been following about upset the gram. I think you reposted one of his. He's, he's one of the things I love about him. I, again, he's not perfect. Uh, but one of the things I love is his boldness to say, like, Oh yeah, the algorithm guys are seeing too many booty shots. That's because the algorithm works. Yeah, <laughs> like you clicked on one. Come on, let's like, and you, you might have to go in and you might have to start. You know, like I don't want to see this content. I don't want to and clean it up, and yeah. then start following. Like those are kind of actionable steps that are real that we could do on a daily basis. Well, and it's, and and not only that, I do think it's. That stuff is so distracting, first off. Yeah. And that's the goal, right? That is the goal. Take it from a former intelligence officer who's still in the field. Okay. I study this stuff ad nauseum. Uh, social engineering, you know, how to influence people, information operations, all that stuff. I'm not trying to get into, like, conspiracy theory stuff. I'm just giving you what I know as yeah. a, you know, a guy who's been there and had access and, you know, seen things that most people haven't. Um, that stuff is created to do one thing to drive you to to buy something or um if we're looking at it on the spiritual side of things it's it's to make you complacent and distracted um the most dangerous thing to the enemy and and i'm not discounting women here because we can't do anything without our our partners that's for sure um but the most dangerous thing to the enemy is going to be us standing up saying hey i'm done I'm not going to keep, you know, being distracted by this nonsense. And that could be political nonsense too. Guess what? I'm seeing it on both sides. Cause we used to, yeah. we used to have to study that. I studied politics, you know, geopolitics in order to understand how to destabilize or stabilize nation states and different cultures and things like that. You are dangerous to the people that want to, to be in control. Okay. And if you look at it, there's only one enemy out there. There's only one enemy, it's Satan, and he's constantly influencing people all over the world to do his bidding. It hasn't changed. I don't think the intensity level has changed. People feel like it's changed. What's actually changed is not the intensity of the enemy's attacks, but good men standing up and saying, hey, I'm done with this crap, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be bold. I'm going to step into my role as a man of God, and I'm not going to put up with this anymore, and then speaking. And, and following it up with action. And I think that's, it's so difficult nowadays and I don't understand why. Cause even in my own, own life, I've looked at that. It's like, why am I afraid to post this on, on, a, on, on the internet? You know, when Paul and Peter and all these guys are going out and knowing they might be crucified upside down and, you know, have their heads cut off and all sorts of other stuff, but there's, they're still going out and doing this and speaking it from street corners in front of people. You know, why am I afraid to do this? Um, it's a conditioning that, that, that's been going on for a long time, for years now, that we have to break. We have to break that cycle. In order to break that cycle, we have to start being bold. And then in order to be bold, we have to be authentic. We have to understand who we are in Christ. That's a hard one. It's not something that happens overnight. But um, just being honest, guess what? Nobody's perfect. So let's get that out of the way. Quit comparing yeah. yourself to people on social media. You'll never, you'll never measure up to the fake persona that you're trying to measure up to 
Um, if God has a calling on your life, step into it. Those open doors present themselves, start being a yes man and start stepping into it. Uh, you might lose everything that you have in the world. Um, but God has promised he's given you everything you need to have life and life more abundantly. That might not be monetary. It might not be possessions, but he's given you everything you need during the time you're here to have life and life more abundantly. So if he's given you that, he's already given you the victory. There's no reason to be scared. There's no reason to fear. So let's stop being afraid. Let's start moving, you know, start standing up, start speaking what you need to uh, Saying what you need to say. Don't wait for somebody else to do it because you're just waiting around forever. And don't think that this is reserved for some special person who has a social media following or something like that or has a, is eloquent in their speech. You are a warrior. You're in a fight. That fight has been going on for thousands of years. It hasn't changed. The intensity hasn't changed. The only thing that's changed is that the devil's being allowed to do more because we're not stepping into our roles. Um, it's time, you know, it's time to do that. Sorry. Soapbox done. Can, can I just say like, amen. <laughs> I don't know if that's a place to stop, but amen. Yeah.